Hi there. We are day 268, I believe, of our Through the Bible in One Year. Let me check. We're up to 268. We're reading the rest of Ezra today. They split it in half and put another book in between it. But today we're reading the rest of Ezra. You remember Ezra was a... <clears throat> he's a direct descendant of Aaron, the original priest, Moses' brother. So he comes from a good line, right? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Ezra's arrival. After these events during the reign of King Atraxerxes, I can say that, <clears throat> of Persia, Ezra, Sariah's son, Ariah's son, Hekai's son, Shalom's son, Zadok's son, Adop's son, Adop's son, Aaron's son, Melith's son, Zahai's son, Uzi's son, Bullock's son, Ashish's son, Phineas's son, Eleazar's son, Aaron, the chief priest's son. Okay? Brother of Moses. <clears throat> so there's the genealogy, if anybody's interested. <laughs> Ezra, right, came up from Babylon. He was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses, which Yahweh, the God of Israel, had given. The king had granted him everything he requested because of the hand of Yahweh and of his God was on him. Some of the Israelites, priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants accompanied him to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Atraxerxes. I'm probably saying that wrong, right? Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month during the seventh year of the king. He began the journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month and arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. That was a long trip, huh? Since the gracious hand of God was on him. Now Ezra had determined in his heart to study the law of the Lord, obey it, and teach its statutes and ordinances in Israel. <clears throat> Letter from a taxerx or taxerxes. <laughs> anyone knows how to say that? Let me know. This is a letter that the king gave to Ezra, the priest and scribe, an expert in matters of the Lord's commands and statutes of Israel. A Turk seeks king of kings, Ezra, to Ezra the priest, an expert in the law of God, of the God of heaven. Greetings. I issue a decree that any of, that any of the Israelites in my kingdom, including their priests and Levites who want to go to Jerusalem, may go with you. You are sent by the king and his seven counselors to evaluate Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of your God, which is in your possession. You also have to bring the silver and gold to the king and his counselors have, have willingly given to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem. And all the silver and gold you receive throughout the province of Babylon, together with the free will offerings given by the people and the priest to the house of their God in Jerusalem. There you, then when you, <clears throat> then you are to buy with this money as many bulls, rams, lambs as needed, along with their grain and drink offerings, and offer them on the altar of the house of your God in Jerusalem. You may do whatever seems best to you and your brothers with the rest of the silver and gold, according to the will of your God. You must deliver to the God of Jerusalem all the articles given to you for the service to the house of your God. You may use the royal treasury to pay for anything else needed for the house of your God. Yeah. I, King of Turxes, are, are tax Xerxes, <laughs> oh, issue a decree to all the treasurers in the region west of the Euphrates River, Coden. Whatever Ezra the priest and expert of the law of God of heaven asked, you must provide promptly up to 7,500 pounds of silver, 500 bushels of wheat, 550 gallons of wine, 550 gallons of oil, and salt without limit. <clears throat> Whatever is commanded by God of heaven must be done diligently for the house of God of heaven, so that the wrath will not fall on the realm of the king and his sons. <laughs> Be advised that tribute, duty, and land tax must not be imposed on any priest, Levites, singers, doorkeepers, temple servants, or other servants in, of this house of God. <clears throat> and you, Ezra, according to God's wisdom that you possess, appoint magistrates and judges to judge all the people in the region west of the Euphrates, and know who know the laws of your God, who teach anyone who does not know them. Anyone who does not keep the law of your God and the law of the king, let a fair judgment be executed against him, whether death, banishment, confiscation of property, or imprisonment. Praise Yahweh, the God of, of, of our Father, who has put it into the king's mind to glorify the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and who has shown favor to me before the king, his counselors, and his powerful officers. So I took courage, because I was strengthened by Yahweh my God, and gathered Israelite leaders to return with me. All right. Oh, look at all these names. I'm not going to pronounce this, okay? These are the family leaders and the ge genealogical records of those who returned with me from Babylon during the king reign, reign of King Atur Ataxer. Yeah, right. Okay. Guess from from Phineas, Daniel from Ishtar, Sistar from David's. Who has this descendant? Zechariah. 150 men with him registered by genealogy. 
Elinoe, son of this, and his descendants, 200 men with him. Shekanakra, son of Zekel, Zeku's descendants. Ebed, son of Jonathan, from Aden's descendants, and 50 men with him. Deshiah, son of Atheva, Elam's descendants, and 70 men with him. Zebediah, Zebediah, son of Michael, from Shephatiah's descendants, and 80 men with him. Obadiah, son of Jethiel, 280 men with him. Shalom, son of Josephiah, from Bandi's descendants, and 160 men with him. Zechariah, son of Bebi, and Bebi's descendants, and 28 men with him. Johanan, son of Haggadon, Agar's descendants, and 110 with him. These are the last ones from Adonikam's descendants, and their names are Elephet, Jewel, Shemaiah, and 60 men with them. Ute and Zukar from Begla's descendants, and 70 men with them. Wow. I gathered them at the river that flowed from Mahala, and we camped there for three days. I searched among the people and priests, but found no Levites there. Then I summoned the leaders, Eleazar, all these leaders, as well as the teachers of Johairun. I sent them to Edo, the leader of Keshifa, with a message for him and his brothers, the temple servants of Kasifir, that they should bring us ministers for the house of God. Since the gracious hand of our God was on us, they brought us Sherebiah, a man of insight from the descendants of Mahi, a descendant of Levi, son of Israel. Well, Levi, the Levites, right? The original. Along with his sons and brothers, 18 men, plus, plus Hashabiah, along with Jess. Josiah, I oh, hate names, from the descendants of Mary and his brothers and their sons. Twenty men there were also 220 of the temple servants who had been appointed by David and the leaders of the work of the Levites. All were identified by name. Preparing to return. I proclaimed the fast by the Ahab River so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us, our children and all our possessions. I did this because I was ashamed to ask the king for infantry and cavalry to protect us from the enemies during the journey since we had told him the hand of our God is gracious to all who seek him. But his great anger is against all who abandoned him, so we fasted and pleaded with our God about this, and he granted our request. I selected twelve of the leading priests along with Shebrevian and ten of their brothers. I weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the articles, the contribution for the house of our God, and the king, his counselors, the leaders, and all the Israelites who were present had offered. I weighed out, <clears throat> out to them twenty-four tons of silver. Holy cow! Silver articles weighing 7,500 pounds, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 gold poles worth 1,000 gold coins, and two articles of fine gleaming bronze as valuable as gold. Then I said to them, You are holy to the Lord, and the articles are holy. The silver and gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of, of your fathers. Guard them carefully until you weigh them out in the chambers of the Lord's house before the leading priest, Levites, and the heads of the Israelite families in Jerusalem. So the priests and Levites took charge of the silver, the gold, and the articles that had been weighed out, to them to bring to the house of God in Jerusalem, arrival in Jerusalem. We set out of the Ahava River on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. We were strengthened by our God. He protected us from the power of the enemy and from the am from ambush along the way. <clears throat> so we arrived at Jerusalem and rested there for three days. On the fourth day, the silver, the gold, the articles were weighed out in the house of the God into the care of Merimoth the priest, son of Uzziah. Eleazar, son of Phineas, was with them. The Levites, Josabat, son of Joshua, and Nebiah, son of Dithes, were also with them. I'm not saying those names, okay? Everything was verified by number and weight, and the total weight was recorded at that time. The exiles who had returned from the captivity offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, 12 bulls for all Israel, 96 rams and 77 lambs, along with 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. The Lord also delivered the king's edicts to the royal satraps and the governors of the region of the west of the Euphrates, so that they would support the people in the house of God. Israel's intermarriage with pagans. That never sounds good, huh? After these things had been done, the leaders approached men and said, The people of Israel, the priests, and the Levites have not separated themselves from the surrounding peoples, whose detestable practices are like those of the Canaanites, Hittites, Pesites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. <clears throat> Indeed, the Israelite men have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed has become mixed with surrounding peoples. The leaders and officials have taken the lead in this unfaithfulness. When I heard this report, I tore my tunic and robe, pulled out some of the hair from my head and, and beard, and sat down devastated. <laughs> Ezra's Confession anyone who, anyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me because of the unfaithfulness of the exiles. While I sat devastated until the evening offering, 
At the evening offering, I got up from my humiliation with my tunic and robe torn. Then I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to Yahweh, my God. And I said, My God, I am ashamed and embarrassed to lift my face toward you. My God, because our iniquities are higher than our heads and our guilt is as high as the heavens. Our guilt has been made... Our guilt has been terrible from the days of our fathers until the present because of our iniquities we have handed over along with our kings and priests to the surrounding kings and to the sword captivity plundering and open shame as as to it as it is today but now for a brief moment grace has come from yahweh our god to preserve a remnant for us and give us a stake in his holy place even in our slavery god has given us a new life and light to our eyes though we are slaves our god has not abandoned us in our slavery he has extended grace to us in the presence of the Persian kings, giving us new life so that we can rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins to give us a, a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Now, our God, what can we say in light of this? For we have abandoned the commands you gave to your servants and prophets, saying, The land you are entering to possess is an impure land. The surrounding peoples have filled it from end to end with their uncleanness by their impurity and detestable practices. So, do not give your daughters to their sons in marriage or take their daughters for your sons. Never seek the peace. Never seek their peace or prosperity, so that you will be strong. Eat the good things of the land and leave it as an inheritance to your sons forever. After all, has, after all that has happened to us because of our evil deeds and terrible guilt, though you, our God, have punished us less than our sins deserve and have allowed us to survive, should we break your commands again and intermarry with the peoples who commit these detestable practices? Wouldn't you become so angry with us that you would destroy us, leaving no survivors? Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we survive as a remnant today. Here, here we are before you with our guilt, though no one can stand in your presence because of this. Okay, last chapter. Sending away foreign wives. While Ezra prayed and confessed weeping and falling face down before the house of God, an extremely large assembly of Israelite men, women, and children gathered around him. <clears throat> the people also wept bitterly. Then this person, son of Jehiel, Elmite, responded to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women from surrounding peoples that are... But there is still hope for Israel in spite of this. Let us therefore make a covenant before our God to send away all the foreign wives and their children, according to the counsel of my Lord and those who tremble at that command of our God. Let it be done according to the law. Get up for his master. For this matter is your responsibility, and we support you. Be strong and take action. Then Ezra got up and made the leading priests, Levites, and all of Israel take an oath to do what had been said. So they took the oath. Ezra then went from, from the house of God and walked to the chamber of Jehovah. Jeh Jehohanan of Eliashib, where he spent the night. He did not eat food or drink water because of, he was mourning over the unfaithfulness of the exiles. They circulated a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem that all exiles should gather at Jerusalem. Whoever did not come within three days would forfeit all his possessions. Mm -hmm. According to the de decision of the leaders and elders and would be excluded from the assembly of the exiles. So all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered in Jerusalem within three days. On the twentieth day of the ninth month, all the people sat in the square house of God, trembling because of this matter and because of the heavy rain. <laughs> then Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have been unfaithfully by marrying foreign women, adding, Israel, adding to Israel's guilt. Therefore make a confession to Yahweh, the God of your fathers, and do his will. Separate yourselves from the surrounding peoples and your foreign wives. Then all the assembly responded with a loud voice, Yes, we will do as you say, but there are many people, and it is a rainy season. <clears throat> we don't have the stamina to stay out in the open. This isn't something that, be, that can be done in a day or two, for we have rebelled terribly in this matter. Let our leaders represent the entire assembly. Then let all those in our towns who have married foreign women come at appointed times together with the elders and judges at each, at each town in order to avert the first anger of our God concerning this matter. Only Jonathan, son of Ashael, and and Jaseo son of Tiba opposed this, with Meshulam and Jababarai, the Levites, supporting them. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> the exiles did what had been proposed, as were the priests selected men who were family leaders, all identified by name to represent the ancestral houses. They convened on the first day of the tenth month to investigate the matter, and by the first day of the first month, they had dealt with all the men who had married foreign women. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, so. Five months. There were 13 months in a year back then. Hmm. Those married to foreign wives. The following were found to have married foreign women who have women from the descendants of the priest. I don't know these people. So, 
from the descendants of Jeshua, son of Zogadak, and his brothers, Messiah, Eliezer, did and again. They pledged to send their wives away, and being guilty, they offered a ram for the flock of their guilt. Hananani and Zechariah from Amor's descendants, Messiah, Eli, oh, there's another Elijah, Semai, Jeshua from Uz, and Uzziah from Haram's descendants, Elohim and Messiah, Ishmael, Nathan, Nathanel, Josabad, and Othai from Prior descendants, the Levites, Jashbar, Simeon, Fodor, that is Galida, Parava, Judah, Elijah, the singers, Elishib, the gatekeeper, Shalom, and Nebuchadnezzar. The Israelites, all these people, okay? Okay, I'm not going to read all these people because I can't pronounce the names and I'll just butcher them. Okay, the descendants, we're just reading through them. Haram's descendants, Benjamin, Shem's descendants, Bani's descendants. What? Oh. Nebo's descendants, just so, da, 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 da. all of these had married foreign women, and, and some of the wives had given birth, given birth to children. Wow. So he sent them all away, right? So that's the that's the entire book of Ezra. And tomorrow we're going to start Nehemiah, okay? Now let's check Nehemiah in my Bible over here. You know, they're nowhere near the books where they have them in here. I can't even find it anymore. I can't find the amount. I don't even know where it's in. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's right next to it. But it fit. Yeah, mine is before, actually, the Bible. So. There are 13 chapters in Nehemiah, so it looks like we might be in there for a couple of days, right? So tomorrow we'll begin Nehemiah, and then Nehemiah, yeah, three days, Nehemiah, and then we're going to do Malachi, and then Luke. Huh. It's going to be interesting reading the Gospels because they're going to follow the same story, so we'll be reading all four Gospels at the same time, which is which will be interesting. A story we are a lot more familiar with, right? Matthew, Matthew, yeah, see. I'm just flipping through. John, John, Luke. <laughs> yeah, see, they got all the things mixed up. You know, I did the whole... Um, Last year, I did a study of the entire New Testament, and I did it chronologically in the order the books were written, and that's in the playlist down there. You know, it starts with the very first thing written was like the letter to the Ephesians or something. It wasn't Gospels. And I did it in the order they, they were actually written and not in chronological order. This is totally different, so that'll be interesting. But yeah, we have another six days, and then we're starting in the New Testament. You know, I... You know, I'm looking at all these Old Testament books, and, you know, I think we went through all of them. You know, you know, I'd have to go back and see. <laughs> but it, it's just the way we are in history that's just jumping around the Old Testament. So, but we're just about done with it, right? And we only have less than 100 days left, okay? Like 97 days left or something, so. We're in 268. So, yeah, we got like 97 days left. And then we'll have completed the entire Bible in a year. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Okay. I've been a Christian for 60 years. And I don't think I have ever diligently read the entire Bible cover to cover in a year. Okay. I've read it many times, but never actual cover to cover in a year. This would be the first for me. So, and will we do it again next year? I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, it seems to be a good thing to do. Maybe we'll find a different, a different kind of through the Bible in a year and do it in a different way. But there you go. Catch up on any main mission. When I say you got the whole Bible in a year, give us a like if you think about it. But till tomorrow, we'll keep going. See you then.